temporary nine-year job and right. she said that you, you can come and work with me in my business but you've got to have your own job as well because you're not like I'm not paying you full-time so she bought me a drone yep. and said I'll pay for the course and we were living sort of quite rurally at the time um so I used to I was waiting for a hip operation so I'd put my drone in a bag and a rucksack and use my crutches and, and, and go out into the field and, and I'd spend all my days practicing flying, doing sort of figure eights and crosses and stuff. Um, and then went off and did my course, which was the same time as you. It was the same time as me. Yeah. Our numbers are very close. And I think our numbers exactly. are quite close with Gav as well, as I was talking to him yeah. earlier. So yeah, uh, yeah we're, all, we're all pretty close. Hey, folks. That's right. I'm on my Todd uh actually i'm not i do have a guest this week um varon isn't going to be here he's uh he's busy doing other things so um yeah we've got our very first guest this week which is uh it's going to be very interesting so um i've spoken a little bit about why i'm here on my own so um our guest this week is is jim bishop from red air media so um i guess we invite him in let's get him in here He's waiting. Um, let's turn the, the camera on. That helps, doesn't it? There he is. <laughs> hey, hello. hey, hello, there. mate. How are you? Yeah, very good. Thank you. Excellent. I see you've got your Red Air Media top on. I've got my Hammer Missions top on, which is this side. There but we I go. don't blend into the background, though, do I? Uh, no. Well, you look like you're abroad. If you didn't have that door there, it looked like you're on holiday. It's the South Hams, mate. It's always like this. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've got my I've got my hammer missions background on. So um yeah, so you're guest number one, mate. Guest well, thank you very one. much. I'm, I'm quite that's proud right. about that actually. That's absolute pleasure. That's a nice, that's a nice headset. Is that a new a new headset, a new edition? It is, mate. Well, you said I needed something better to speak with, and I've always felt like I should be in a call center from time to time to free up the hands <laughs> when I'm doing other jobs as well. Well, that's good. So, you get yourself a headset now for for future for future use. Yeah, I, I thought it matches in with my nice blonde. You see, so I'll go for the lighter color. <laughs> yeah, well, you, you've got hair, my friend. <laughs> I haven't. I haven't. It's, it's good to have you along, buddy. Uh, I yeah, know thank we, you very we much. T- we talk quite a lot on the phone and um, red air help hammer out quite a lot on on various bits and bobs and i know your your counterpart gav is uh is doing some some testing for us i think today he's going to do some of that which is which is cool um so yeah to give yourself a little intro fella what do what do red air media do well i'm commander jim bishop ah, <laughs> commander. <laughs> much like my good self <laughs> exactly very similar <laughs> numbers as well on the, on the bnet flying skills so uh, we started the business seven years ago. It okay. was um, my wife's idea. She watched a TV program. Um, I'd been working for, uh, for Parcel Force as a temporary nine-year job. And right. she said that you, you can come and work with me in my business, but you've got to have your own job as well because you're not like I'm not paying you full time. So she bought me a drone yep. and said I'll pay for the course. And we were living sort of quite rurally at the time. Um, so I, used to, I was waiting for a hip operation. So I'd put my drone in a bag and a rucksack and use my crutches and, and, and go out into the field. And, and I'd spend all my days practicing flying, doing sort of figure eights and crosses and stuff. Um, and then went off and did my course, which was the same time as you. It was the same time as me. Yeah. Our numbers are very close. And I think our numbers exactly. are quite close with Gav as well, as I was talking to him yeah. earlier. So, yeah, uh, yeah we're, all, we're all pretty close on the old um, PIFCO numbers. Yeah, so uh, I, I, I'm from a construction background, sort of worked in um, the dockyards in sort of building and maintenance and stuff and okay. worked in the window industry and constructions and stuff. So I was interested in how drones work in, in construction in the industry. Um, so I set, set up Red Air, um, started doing a few bits and pieces and then through a, through a stroke of luck, a friend of mine worked for Apple and nice. he said, we're doing a talk in the Plymouth store, talking to people about drones and industry. Uh, would you like to come on and do a talk? Going, yeah, okay, yeah. Pretty cool. I'm not worried about talking in front of people. And I've been filming a bit of surfing as well, because I live near a surf beach. You look like a surfer. Uh, it's just a look. <laughs> 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 and yeah, so we, I went along and... Two days before in the newspaper, there was like Emmy Award winning Gavin Crowther will be talking about drones and yeah, you should do this and you should do that. So I was like, oh, God, this is like, you know, this guy used to hang out of helicopters and stuff. I'm like, well, out of my league. So hey, and, hang on, just 
Emmy Award winning Gav. Emmy Award? Has he not shown you his Emmy? He has not. I didn't know this. Right, I'll be hassling yeah. him for a, an Emmy photo later on then. Yeah, we, we do take it along to meetings and stuff nice, from time to nice. time. Uh, I'll, give you, I'll, <laughs> I'll hassle him for that later. Yeah, no, so sorry, he, he, sorry, carry on. Um, so we went to Apple. Gav was there. We, I started to talk. He joined in. We bantered each other and sort of answered all the questions together and got on really, really well. And he said, like, you've got a bit of an eye for this, actually. Not everybody can frame a picture or get composition. I'm doing this on my own as well. Should we try and do it together? Mm -hmm. So, and that was probably about seven years ago. Um, Started off sort of doing local authority work. Uh, We were still one of our clients, um, filming, TV work and stuff. Um, And over the last two or three years, we've been sort of, now we understand we cut our teeth in the industry. We've sort of got ourselves more into the corporate uh, side with obviously the change in what's happening um, with, with building inspections and surveys and photometrics and stuff, as well as big corporate filming projects for you know, large brands uh, okay. and stuff. So, and, and we've grown and I'm a geek. I love being a geek. So as am I. technology, yeah, technology floats my boat. So photometrics is only really like a year old doing it properly. This is really new stuff. Yeah. So, so with that industry growing over the last 12 months, we started to introduce photometrics into standard roof surveys, which most people probably take about like 40 or 50 photographs, but we were finding then the client has to do a lot of flicking and stuff. So we were producing it in photometrics uh, and, and it's grown, you know, the last 12 months we're working, you know, with some, some big building contractors and some big agencies and stuff like that. And, and then we met you, you know, um, so we, we've grown, you know, we're, we're really busy. We're out it's probably two or three days a week doing something with the drones. We've yep. got six, uh, I think we've got six drones at the moment. Okay. Um, I'll yeah, come on to what cool. drones you've got and stuff later on. So um, what, I suppose, what gave you the inspiration to get into the beautiful industry that we are currently in, although it, it is changing, it's a changing industry, but what, what inspired you to, to do kind of what, what you do, what you do now? You and you and Gav, although Gav um, isn't here. Yeah, yeah. Um, the technology side for me in construction, I've always been interested in construction and houses and stuff, and I've done building and refurbishment stuff myself and sort of timber frame and eco buildings and stuff okay. before the recession. So how drones can work in the future has is, is, is been a big thing for me. I'm a real techie tomorrow's world geek off the old days oh, tomorrow's world was awesome i used to love yeah. tomorrow's world so that's my that's my generation so i've always been my, my dad we used to call him go go gadget bob he was always like <laughs> you know go, all go those, gadget bob Excellent. yeah all those all those things around the house you could buy which men never use my dad always bought isn't there and, a scene um, at gremlins isn't isn't the main you've obviously you must have seen gremlins right i'm nearly old enough yeah yeah nearly <laughs> Um, there's a scene in Gremlins, isn't there, where um, the dad is near like an inventor and he's always yeah. got loads of gadgets around the house. That's how I see Yeah, it. Yeah, that's how I see your dad. But yeah, in the sort of not so practical sort of way, he's the guy oh, okay. that would put a, a fish finger in a microwave for five minutes because he didn't read the instructions. <laughs> um, so, yeah, my dad's always been not that good at technology, whereas I've always sort of embraced it and loved it. And okay. I remember buying my first drone and my dad turned around to me and said, I I don't know why you're wasting your money on that. It, you, it'll never take off. Um, Do you know what? Me and you were like, my, yeah. uh, unfortunately, my, my mum had, had passed away that by the time I bought my first drone. But my dad also said, isn't it just a toy? How are you going to make any money out of that? Yeah. And then six months later, when he saw my name run up on the credits with DIY SOS on BBC One on a prime time evening, I was like, ah, there you go, pop. <laughs> Have some of that, pa. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, you know, I so- proved a point. Yeah, since when we've done Country File, uh, Hampton Court Flower Show, Chelsea Flower Show, ITN Tonight, huge list of BBC and ITV programs yeah. and stuff that we've done and commissions and stuff. So every time it comes to Natalia, I was like, send a little screenshot to me, Dad. Waste of <laughs> money, that Joan, wasn't it? <laughs> I could have spent my money better elsewhere, Dad. Honest. Exactly. He actually yeah. at his own words, which is great. So, you know, um, <laughs> but that, that was actually a bit of an inspiration behind it. Um, Claire, my wife, is a, is a, is a good businesswoman anyway. Um, her business is, you know, she has this attitude of if you want it, you get it. Yeah. You go out and go out and chase it down. You'll have it. That's that's like life. can can do attitude. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what thing. she's instilled for me from the beginning. And weirdly, you know, weirdly enough, my my wife was the one that inspired me to um, 
fly drones in much uh, similar way as you. Yeah, Super- and I love it. You know, yeah. I, I I quit. I still get it's been seven years now. I still get excited when the phone rings. So I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. I don't know what my next phone call is or my next job. And nervous, right? No, so, I sometimes sometimes sometimes, yeah. sometimes I get the EBGBs. I've had a couple of jobs. We did villages by the sea. Um, and I'm not flown off a boat for a while, uh, and they took us off round. They took us from Penzance around Lands End up to uh, Batalic in a six to seven foot swell um to fly and film with it and that was like that give me the eebie-jeebies for the fact that the guy with me uh ollie was a great spotter he was a cricketer i only take people spotting with me on a boat that really got big hands <laughs> so, so catch it yeah so gavin's got sausage fingers and he's a climber <laughs> so he, he could he could snatch a peregrine falcon at the air so i had this shoot to do so i got this guy called ollie ollie to come with me he's a cricketer um so we were in a, in a seven foot swell Oh. trying to catch what I need is somebody like with safe hands uh and that was a bit a bit twitchy because obviously flying up a boat you've got no gps well yeah, yeah and, home and, control and, points and stuff yeah and, and you can't you know. you know land landing on a. I mean I don't do boats full stop I'm not a seafaring yeah. man um my granddad was a he was royal navy so yeah I I don't know where I'd get my non-sea legs from but I, <laughs> I can't I can't cope with the sea at all so I generally I think I've flown from a boat maybe twice in the in the seven or so years that I've been doing it. And I just, yeah, it's just not for me. I'm a no. land. I'm a landy, me. Yeah, um, yeah. Especially, uh, especially when you've got to jam yourself in because the boat was going so much. I had to jam my elbows in between something so I could try and keep myself steady while I was flying and sort of chase this boat and do some scenery shots. And I'm like, yeah, I, you I know. Get, I, uh, did you get seasick? No. Yeah, see, I do. That's why I don't do boats. <laughs> Yeah, I I, pu- I puke on the uh, on the sort of on the, the, the like a mill pond will make me uh, will make me feel sick. <laughs> there you go. So talking to drones, what drones? What drones have you got? Uh, and, so, and kind of how do you define them in the industry that that you're in? So you do both, yeah. obviously, TV and and the construction side. The drones you've got, kind of, you know, talk to me a bit about those. So starting off the bottom, we've got the Mavic Mini Pro Three. Yep um excellent tool obviously for proximity work um and and reducing risk elements and stuff flying nearer or closer to anything that we can do within permissions of what we're allowed to fly in um also has some amazing self-tracking ability on it so if you're shooting vehicles and bikes and running and stuff you can just click and it flies itself as much as i'm a good pilot and i can fly like that it can produce shots that you'd struggle to do on your own yeah. Um, so, so it has a useful tool in its place, obviously for flying indoors and stuff as well. Yeah. You know, because it's light. Um, that we've had about a year. I have the faithful Mavic 2 Pro, oh, which the, is a, the four course. years old. That thing is mint. I like, it's I bullet, know it's that. bulletproof, isn't it? Absolutely it's bulletproof. bulletproof. Yep. I can fly that all day, every day, all winds, all conditions, backwards, six foot off the water, whatever. That's ace. Love that thing. It's a happy little, um, happy little aircraft, that one. Yeah, that's cool. We did have two of them, but a bird took it out, uh, which means we upgraded to a Mavic 3, okay. uh, which Gav's got, and he flies that one. I find that a bit... I'm struggling with that. A lot of people say, it as well, it's very twitchy. It um, is. Yeah, they are. Even, they are t- How do you find GPS on those? Because I know a lot of people report GPS issues, but maybe they've maybe they've fixed that now. We don't have any buildings in the West Country, so it doesn't really make any That's difference. That's true. Down here. There's nothing there, is there, really? No, no. You it's can just... see the horizon pretty much everywhere. So, <laughs> it's just know. fields and sea. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, I, unless I'm flying it in cine mode, I find it really hard to control because I can fly that Mavic uh, 2 Pro in sport mode, handbrake turn on it and everything. Yeah. Not from, but that 3 I struggle with. But, you know, uh, if, if the 2 touch wood ever goes down, I'll have to get used to it. Um what else we got? The M two EA. Uh, okay, so that's another really en- good walker. Enterprise bit of kit, which is is something we you know at Hammer Missions get get involved in the enterprise side of things. Talk yeah, to me a bit about this, that one. So we had the Zoom for three years, and I think okay. we flew flew so many so many hours, and it was due for an upgrade. Um, we do a lot of work for our local authority, and especially in the winter season coming up. So we go out and photograph the uh, like a long shot. And a clear yep. shot, a roof shot, and a rear shot of about eleven hundred properties. Okay. 
over the winter for their stock condition reports for our local authority. Um, they found that, so a bit more light on that. Oh, oh, that's better. That's better. They found that amazing. It saved them so much money because they were sending building contractors out to say what the conditions of our building. They send out a painting contract that they're going to say they all need painting. Yep. Uh, send out a roof contract to say they all need roofing. So they pay us to do that over January, February, March, I think 11, 1200 properties. So you imagine we're flying probably six hours a day, um, you know, walking down streets. It's almost like a PlayStation game. We're walking down the street going, <laughs> nil, 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 so nil, nil. characteristics wise between the M, uh, the M2 Pro and the M2 EA, how do you, how do you find, I mean, characteristics are going to be pretty similar, right? They fly exactly the same, which is yeah. good. Um, and it's the quick, Quick zoom. So if we, if you know, you you fly up above a building, quick zoom in, frame in the roof, click, fly around the back, zoom in, click. So we yeah. just get a nice overall condition shot. One of us with a clipboard. So that's a workhorse. We just absolutely flew the pants at anyone. So it was new for an upgrade, and obviously the thermal capability. Of course, um, that makes a big difference. We've just done two thermal reports for local big architect company and the housing association. Association, which has saved them a huge amount of time getting okay. some reports back. So that's really cool. And the big daddy, the M300 RTK. Ah, the monster, with, which with we, the P1. We, we fly as well. We don't have a P1 with ours. Um, what have we got? I think we've got one of the older zoom cameras. Um, yeah. Yeah. Talk to me about your your experiences with the, M, the M300 then. Absolutely love it. It's just an amazing bit. It sounds like a Chinook helicopter. I think the first time you fly it, you get a bit like twitchy because it's so big. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> I agree. It's it's a monster when it takes off and you have to stand back from it. Um, once you've flown it, once you understand the flight control view is quite complicated because you've yes. got obviously three live cameras. Yep. Um, and how you set it to fly is completely different in, in, in pre-setting your flights, et cetera, on missions. Um, but it's just so capable. It's, it's an amazing bit of kit. It's quick to set up. You follow yep. your routines for setup, because um, obviously that the biggest only ever issue with them is not locking the arms out. Um, as the police find, I think we have twenty incidents last year. Apparently, so I was told was, of uh, not locking the arms out. Yeah, so it's that's a double, violent. double, triple check. It's the arms and the legs as well. Yes. A lot of people either don't lock the leg, lock the legs tight enough, or um, they don't lock them at all. Um, yeah, their legs just drop out. Imagine landing one of those with no legs. No. No, you wouldn't want to, no. would you? Make smash you that, cry. Smash that yeah, camera so, up. So that's a, the setup is always a double man job. Check yep. it, check it, double check it, say it, talk to yourself, get it checked. Um, and it just eats data. It's really, really good. Um, yep. It's, you know, you can fly in most conditions, the wind, it leak. Um, the results of what we got back recently, we've done a couple of fabulous projects that we also use on the, a camera for now. That's on the P1, right? On the P1, yeah. Yeah. So tell me, tell me a bit about the P1 and how you how you find the P1 and and it's kind of it's a, it's advantages. Uh, it's data size. It, it's capturing, and because the camera is so big and so clear, you, you're covering. So normally, if you go back to using a, a Mavic or something for uh, photometrics, you're flying. Yeah. You probably even get seven to ten meters per second. Yeah. Um, you put the 300 up with the P1 on, and you're doing 30 meters per second. It is insane. It it's just... a 45 megapixel camera as well, isn't it? So you get the yeah the quality that comes out of the shots. It's just, you know, second to none, really. Yeah. I mean, we've yeah. we've we've gone up with our M300 with a um a 50 megapixel camera um by a third party company. And the camera was, you know, the the, the quality of picture is is absolutely insane. Um yeah. but the camera was quite bulky, whereas um Sure, the P1 actually isn't that bulky, is it? No, I've got. Oh, I've said it. I've left it down the stairs. No, oh. it's not. It's not very big. It's not very big at all. And you know, the amount of work that it does as well. We we've just done um, a project at Tintagel Castle for Hammer Mission, uh, yep. which we put up through Hammer. Yep. Um, it just ate up that data and the quality of it back. Um, English Heritage were blown away by it. You know, the, the the quality of the data and obviously the reporting back through the Hammer portal as well has been. They they were so excited with it. They shared it with everybody in the company. Nice. I saw a, <laughs> I saw a photo of you. I think it was on it was either LinkedIn or Facebook, and you're sat there on the on the ground at Tintagel with the controller, looking. Did did I look professional? Was I you, concentrating? You did look professional. Yeah, you also looked <laughs> like you were slightly 
tr- troubled by the experience. I, I always like to sit down and concentrate when I'm setting the drone up to fly yeah. because um, I've got a dodgy leg anyway, so I, I balance. And if there's a bit of wind, I'll probably fall over. <laughs> uh, so I always find sitting down in front. The same if I fly anything. If I'm flying a mission, I'll sit down in my pally case because I just find I've got more control on what I'm doing. And so the good, the good thing with the M300 pally case is it's so bloody big. It's it's like a chair. Exactly. You can just you sit know. on it. Um, yeah, I've got a drink, something to eat. You know, I can set the control down. I can watch it as well as watching a drone. And you can and also use it, as, it. A, as a landing pad as well because the legs actually fit perfectly within the. Uh, there's, I think there's two gaps on the top where you can. You can sit it. Taking it off from that's easy. Landing it in those same gaps, not so easy. Not a 22 grand, I wouldn't. No, I, want at least, I, just, I, want, I want at least 10 foot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to land it somewhere here. Uh, in this where, football, in the middle of the football field. Yeah, where I have room. Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, they are they are a, a monstrous aircraft. But the, the results you get out of them are are fantastic. Um, what sort of um, flight time are you getting out of yours with the, with the P1 on it? Um, 45 minutes. Oh, yeah, we're getting that's good in, battery. It's in low wind. It's, yeah, it's absolutely cruising. You sort of forget you're thinking it's going to come back in a minute. You know, it's well, just going and going and going. That's the thing, isn't it? So you've got those two massive batteries on it. The yeah. unit's quite hefty, but if you've got the payloads quite light, you'll get yeah. an increased, increased flight time. Whereas when we took it out with uh, the large third party 50 megapixel camera, the camera was so big and heavy. I think I was only getting about 18, 19 minutes. Oh yeah, the P one's probably not more than a kilo. So that's what you. That's what if you need. that. It's a really really light camera, and yeah, and we're doing missions with like uh, having to change batteries. We're doing like a thousand twelve hundred images without changing battery on some flights, which is insane. You know, you get the right wind conditions as well, so it's not fighting. It's just like, is it going to come back in a minute? You just <laughs> sat there like <laughs> watching Where is the thing it? going. Click, 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 like a Japanese tourist. It's just like... <laughs> so tell me a bit about Gav. Where does Gav slide into the whole Red Air media thing? So Gavin is the original Hollywood stuntman TV guy that used to hang on the skids of uh, helicopters filming. You know, he, he was the he was uh, the A-team man. He used to do all his filming, hanging out with a strop and, and cameras. And, all strapped and- up. Yeah, yeah, just standing on the skid, skid stuff, and he did that like nothing. Um, wow. He started off in Adventure TV, so he got his Emmy. Okay, from, which I, I, uh, I've yet to see. I want evidence yeah. of this Emmy. So there's um, a film, it's on YouTube, called The Rock Queen, which was a lady called Catherine Desterville. Okay. And she free-crimed the old man of Hoy just after Chris Bonington done it back in the olden days. And it's actually a colour film as well, which is good. Um <laughs> So they dropped Gavin on the top of the Old Man of Hoy by helicopter. Old Man of Hoy, just wh- whereabouts is that? So that's in uh, northeast Scotland. It's a big okay. pinnacle okay. Uh, in the sea. And she was free climbing it three months pregnant. So they dropped Gavin on the top to drop him down, to climb down to film her climbing it. And they did it for the American Network Channel. And they filmed him filming her. Wow. Um, and that's how he got his Emmy. Well, I shall have to have a look at this Emmy. I might give him a shout later on. I've got yeah. to speak to him later anyway. I'm going to get him to send me a photo of the Emmy. I expect, is it in his yeah. office? Of course it is. Yes. Next to his other awards. So he, he, he flew down through, um, he did this big micro light flight down through Jordan and stayed with the King Hussein. And he's wow. done some, he, he tells some amazing stories, potholing with Sid Peru. And his, his, his background wow. in his early days is fascinating in what he's achieved, as well as being... Um, a TV extra as well. He's been on every Ooh. soap as a TV extra. An actor back in <laughs> That's something I can also I can have a chat with him about. Yeah. Um, so he fantastic. So when we, when we're doing broadcast and filming or making sort of films for companies, Gav's got this wealth of experience in TV, going back to the old cameras and stuff. The old, you know, uh, and, cine cameras. Yeah, and he's just got a knowledge. He knows so much. So when we're going on a shoot and we're all shooting together, he, you know, he gives us some great advice. That's uh, you cool. know of how. Um, so we come away with good stuff, which is, I guess while we, we, we get to do, well, we've done Chelsea Flower Show for like five or six years now nice. and, and Hampton Court and stuff, because they know they can trust us to go out and capture it. We know what we're doing. Um, um, especially, I suppose, with Gav, with that huge TV background, is also a massive, a massive advantage, right? Yeah, definitely. It's a load of people he knows from back in the day as well. And they just contact us because they we're, we're capable. We turn up with our drones and they just go, you know what you're doing? See you get later. 
Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, and it works well. We're, we're a great team on the technology, sort of, you know, this side of things where we do all the surveying and the digital side of stuff is sort of my side and Gav is the film inside. Um, we're very good because we, we do both do parts to the well, business. Which it balances important. out, doesn't it? You both you both work well together. Oh, phenomenally. I think without each other, I don't think we'd achieve half the things we need to do. And we need, also need that objectiveness. And we're very honest with each other. We always have been. If you know, if one of us does something we don't like or disagree, and we we know that in business, you just got to say that you know that's I don't think that's right, and we that's, talk about it. That's the way to run a team, definitely. Yeah, without yeah, absolutely, a, without a doubt. So back to DJI. Yes. How do you how do you find DJI drones? Would you Brilliant. would you think about moving to something else, or are you are you completely you level? No, level DJI. You can pick up any DJI drone and fly it. Um, that's what I like about it. They're, they're bomb proof. They've been tried and tested. We've had a, um, other stuff. We've had Yonux and um, other bits and pieces in the past. And I've flown other drones and stuff, uh, and I just. I find them difficult or complicated, the software systems. And it's the same as, I guess, being an, an Apple or an Android phone yeah. person. Yeah. You you know, I've been flying DJI since the DJI Phantom 3 Pro uh, for seven years. And I've, I've been through everything, the airs. And I just know I'm inside it and back to front. They're so durable. I've had no failure on no. any of my drones. I, mean, um, I, I originally started with, uh, I started with DJI. I moved to another brand, um, which were great. Um, and then I just had to follow the flow. That was so much was happening with DJI, DJI, that I couldn't, I couldn't justify having other equipment. I had yeah. to, I had to stick with with DJI, and I'm happy I have because the way it's gone, you know, everything is. They just focus their entire business on advancements in technology and and moving yeah. their kit forwards, upwards, and yeah. onwards. Yeah, so, definitely. No pun intended, obviously. Yeah, their sensors and payloads on, on the commercial stuff that you use for making films and stuff. Whereas before you had to turn up with an Inspire with a bundle of cameras, you can shoot it on a Mavic 3 now, Mavic 3 Cine, yep. or still on the Mavic 2 Pro, and yeah, you can do easily. TV and film quality production from it. You can indeed. You, know? you can indeed. So, it, sorry, go on. Go on. Yeah, I think, I think it's quite funny because people are used to turn up with Inspires and stuff, which are great bits of kit. Yep. But they have their vulnerabilities. You know, You can't really get some of the shots you would do because you've got the big downwash and the noise and stuff. So when you turn up on a, on a BBC shoot or something like that, and I th well, the guys are used to it now, you know, I turn up with a Mavic and, and people understand it. But in the olden days, we used to take along the Inspire and just take out the case, then fly the Mavic because people didn't get their head around it. Um, <laughs> and the Inspire's waft as well, I find. Yeah. You know, if it's, especially the old Inspire ones, they used to waft around all over the place. I'm surprised that GPS even really did anything. The Inspire, <laughs> 2, the Inspire 2 was a lot better, but it still, it still wafts around. Whereas, you know, I take the Mavic 2 Pro up, it's like solid as a rock. Yeah, definitely. I know. It doesn't, um, doesn't move. Now, Gavin flew the Inspire 1 with James Martin and uh, the wind caught it. And I think it was a bit like a Matrix moment where <laughs> James and Martin went like this as it went through the air. And it missed him by miles, but it was just, it, we were flying in, in quite a test in wind condition. And yeah, I've, took the I've drone done off the and... same, um, you know, hefty wind conditions on a, on a beach in Littlehampton for a feature film. And the Inspire yeah. just went, wee down the beach. The shot looks great. But, you know, it was like wrestling a whale trying to get it back to land. And land it. And, and land I it. remember Gavin, like, panicking to land it. And he really pulled out of the bag. I took my hats off into that day because we all just stood back. And went, yeah, just, you know, on, then. Get, get it done. <laughs> that's, you know, beads of sweat coming down his head. And he landed it. It was, you know, it was it was blowing some as well that day. Um, <laughs> so on the, the back to kind of construction side of things. Yeah. What I know you've had, you've had quite a few challenges. What's been your most challenging mission to date? Drone wise, um, we've done some projects uh, for the Ministry of Justice, which have been in really restricted airspaces. Yeah, um, that can be quite complicated. Um, getting permission to fly in heavily restricted red zone areas um, can be difficult. That again is procedures. I mean, Gavin is ace at procedures. So, you know, we never have a problem flying anywhere. We've, we've flown over sort of prison projects. Um, we've flown over military bases. Uh, we've flown next to the nuclear dockyard. We've flown at Chelsea Heliport. 
Um, Gav's really off, good offline at... there too. It's uh, yeah, that can be a challenge. Yeah, and Gav's so good at that. He's such a good way of communicating with these people that we never have a problem flying anywhere. So that can be quite tricky in understanding where how to unlock where to fly because you can fly anywhere. You just need to go through the right procedures. We actually, yeah. we've even flown at the end of a live runway. Uh, a new key airport within sort of like 100 meters of airplanes taken off, but you it just was all need done to, through. You just need to know the rules and regs and and know who to talk to and how to, you know, how to make how how to make that party aware of what you're doing and how yeah. to unlock the, you know, not only unlock the aircraft, but, you know, speak to the right authorities and make sure everyone's all talking in unison to yeah. know and, what the approach is and how you're going to yeah. do it. Yeah, and, and you know, with a, a huge experience, I think probably me and Gavin have done seven hundred plus hours flying. So when you you talk to these companies and you tell them how long you've been flying and what experience you've got, then when you open up the channels of communication to say how do we get permission to fly it, these you know, these air traffic control people have been really really good with us. So yeah. that holds one issue. Um, the most interesting is probably one we did last week, which is up on your thing at Hamlet at the moment, was Tintagel Castle for English yeah, Heritage. Yeah, that, that looks exciting. That one. Probably the most well-known landmark in Cornwall, yep. um, the Merlin's Cave. Uh, King Arthur's Heritage. Castle, wasn't it? King, King Arthur's? Arthur's Castle, yeah, yeah. 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 Or what's so, left of it. What's left of it. So they had a last year in the storm. Um, you know you said about War Day? Yes. A Chinook. Can you hear it? Oh, I can just about hear it, yeah. And it's not even th- it's a Thursday. It's not even Thursday, is it? No, I'm expecting some over today. I end- ended up with four over yesterday, three yeah. in the middle of the day. And then one came over last night so low that it shook the windows on my house. <laughs> it was about 250 feet off the tarmac. Um, it's crazy, isn't it? Yeah, it's good fun, though. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, so it's in touch with Castle. So basically, last year in the storm, a big piece of the cliff fell away. Okay. Um, it's obviously in the most precarious place on the Atlantic coast. And... They, the architects that we work for um, in English Heritage, were concerned of how things are starting to break down. So they want us to create an accurate digital model of it so they can inspect it, um, looking at putting some plans in place to preserve it. And also we can go back in 12 months' time and drop the same model on top yep. um, to see if there's any changes in the erosion. Um, that was probably one of the most fascinating projects because, you know, everybody knows it. And it's a repeat project as well, right? So you can go yeah. back and, as you just said then, you know, you can take the data you've got from last week. Yeah. You can take that back next year and go, well, plot that on top. What's changed? Yeah, and exactly. Whole, and you know, that, that boils down to the whole digital twin side of things. Exactly. And again, this is a new new in the industry, you know, uh, image modeling and twin images is in the last 12 months. So we've been educating uh, the architects about this technology. They're setting up a te- dedicated team that we are doing a presentation to in the next couple of weeks yep. um, to support them across the whole of the English heritage. I think it's 460 sites Fantastic. for English heritage across the UK, um, which this architect company work with. And hopefully you now we can provide them with the solutions you know, to go and capture all this data because there's nothing better than looking at a 3D twin or 3D model. Well, exactly. And you can go back, you know, time and time and time again, and you can adapt and build on that on that digital twin. Yeah, definitely. A lot of this the... digital twin stuff came up last week at the um, London Build Expo. So, yeah. you know, it is, it's definitely, a, you know, the, the future of, of that side of the, the build industry or the, you know, it, you know, even people like English Heritage where they can see, yeah, the, the erosion on Tintagel Castle over X amount of time. Yeah, yeah. And we do the same on construction sites. So we go yep. monthly to a construction site, do the same flyover. They can look at the progression on the site. And obviously, as a team, they can put that on a, a shared screen and look at groundworks and stuff to see the condition of the site rather than a whole team of people going out to sites. We do that on monthly rolling basis on construction sites as well, um, cool. across the southwest of England. Uh, and that's paying dividends. That's, again, new technology. People aren't doing that. Um, whereas before they had a time-lapse camera, you can't yep. see you can't see where, maybe, where somebody's left a pile of bricks or there's no. a hole that's not dug or, you know, and you can't discuss that with 20 people. No. I mean, that's where, you know, digital digital twins are definitely a huge advantage. Okay, so let's move on to Hammer. Yep. Or oh, there, that side. Woo. That side. Um, so 
how did you first become aware of, of Hammer Missions and, and what we do as a company? Um, you were stalking me on LinkedIn. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cut. No, we'll cut there. Um, so I was going to say what caught your attention, but if we were stalking you on um, on uh, on LinkedIn, go on. What, I can't. What... I can't I, no, I can't remember how we started the conversation. Um, I can't either, to be fair. No, but it was a what? It was probably about six to nine months ago. Yeah, uh, and, and I, I think we... we were just chatting about general stuff, weren't we? On, on yeah. LinkedIn, and then we had a we had a phone conversation, and I think it kind of. A friendship, sort of bloomed, from a friendship bloomed from there. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah, and we were working with, a, we had a 12 month subscription with a software company, which is now run out and we're now with Hammer Missions. We, we, we will not mention who they are. No, we won't mention them because we don't need to because <laughs> we don't. what Hammer's doing is, is evolving more. Um, exactly. What I've, in, what I've enjoyed predominantly more of the last couple of months, and we've been talking for probably six months with you yeah. and Baron anyway, but the last couple of months, we've taken that to a, a, a different level. Yep. Um, with one of our clients talking to you um, about how you can get in with their company, uh, yep. which is fabulous, and and understanding what you need to do for their needs for the for the BIM industry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and what I love the fact that hammers evolving, so I can ring you up or ring uh, um, Farron up and say, look, we've got this project coming up, we need to do this, and then like, you do a click, click, click on the keyboard. Yeah, that would be available tomorrow or next week. Um, so as well as doing what most people else are doing, you're constantly evolving for what the needs are for the client. Um, you know, and that, that changes for us. You in the last two months, how we output our data has changed uh, in what the end client needs. And we found that from probably five clients in four weeks that they need everything to go into Rivet. Um so Hammer turned around and said, cool, no problem. We can we can do that. That's not a problem at all. So yep. exportables are now into Rivet, which is what all the clients are now wanting in the architect's world and the construction side. Um, okay. okay, so that's your that's that's your biggest praise, which thank you very much for that. Would you have any complaints? Is there anything not complaints? Is there anything we could do better that you would like to see as a as a as a customer client? Do you know what the best thing, but no, not really, because yeah, you're at the end. <laughs> That's what, what we want to hear. Yeah, your your biggest goal as well over the other people on the marketplace is you're a UK-based, friendly, accessible business. That we are. I, I can pick the phone up, or any of my clients can pick the phone up to you at any time of the day and say, I've got a question, and you'll respond. And yeah. you don't get that with the other people because they're world-based and they're all over the world. So unless you stay up to one o'clock in the morning, you're not going you to get have a conversation with people. So that's you know, kind of where you... we, that's kind of what we pride ourselves on is the fact that we are easily accessible. Um, you know, you can drop us a message on the, you know, on the, on the website or, hmm. you know, drop us an email or even give us a call. You know, if you, if you're that close knit with us, you give us a call and we'll, we'll help you out as much as we, as we possibly can. Yeah, um, especially when especially when you're on site and you're trying to do a complicated mission or we're doing yeah. something new or adapting what you're trying to do. You know, when you first get to use a new software, it's complicated. When I first started using uh, Hammer a couple of months ago, it's just that changing the way how you do things. But actually now I've been on to site with Hammer and I'll take my laptop and you can upload it anyway yeah. uh, and make some change on site. I know I can pick the phone up, but I've just found it really intuitive to to come across to. Um, I was just doing some reports this morning, so I sent across another um, set of data to you last week of fourteen tower blocks. Yep. Where we did those. where we did a down map, and then we did all the eaves. Yep. Um, so getting that processed is great, and I've been through that this morning to take off some images to send a, a quick report across to uh, the housing authority. So he can have a quick overview. So to, to look that onto full screen, zoom in again, take some screenshots and be able to share that to him in, in a quick email this morning. He was blown away by the detail that came out of it and the fact of the tracking positions on the uh, on the viewfinder on Hammer Missions is so clear and precise. You know exactly what you're looking at. Cool. That's that's good to know. So I won't ask you, I won't ask what you made you switch to Hammer because I think you've already made that fairly apparent. Yeah, uh, you, you, you're growing. Um, I think you're in the next six months will probably be ahead of everybody else in the software because of the development work you're doing. 
Cool. You're, you're chasing the industry. You're trying to be, you listen to every conversation that I get back from my yep. clients which in the BIM industry and architects. And every time I come back to something that I feed back to you, you guys start working on it. Yeah, um, I mean, and, that's, you know, it's got to be progressive, right? You can't, yeah, you can't yeah. sit in the past. If there's if there's stuff that to be addressed, we'll, uh, we'll address it. If there's new stuff that that people want that we think would be advantageous to to not only you know, us but our other clients, then we'll address it. It's um yeah, I mean it's a fast moving industry, and we want to be you know we want to be on the forefront of it. Yeah, basically. and I, I think you are, and we're, we're we're so pleased to be on board. Um, and happy I think to, you, happy to have you on board. Yeah, it's gonna be good. I've got another yeah. client. I'm seeing somebody tomorrow, and I'm doing a presentation using the Hammer Mission with them tomorrow. Okay. So back to you, Jim. Yes. Where do you see your organization going? What's the next big thing for you, fella? Mm. Aha, That's a spot. good question. Yeah. So I've got um, a quite an interesting network of people that work for me, subcontract stuff at the moment as well. Um, I'm coming John Pollitt. I would like to be doing more missions. I love this digital twin and 3D. Yep. Um, I think we're progressing that at the moment. Um I like to be doing a couple of big sites per week um, continuously, you know, working with Hammer on these sites with the big construction companies. I love that side of the industry and, and where that's going to go. Um, yeah, I think it's a difficult one. We, the last three months has been quite a big growth spot for us um, commercially, both on the construction side, which I think will grow bigger into next year. Um you know, I've got some great guys around me that I can deploy right across the south and southwest of yep. the country. I mean, I'm chatting um, to you, you know, you, you're, you are going from strength to strength because you've always got, whenever I talk to you, you've always got something something else happening, which is great. That's, that's great yeah. for the industry, you know, great for your business. Yeah. So, um, I've got, yes, I've got, the, the, pub, on, the sorry, pubs the, the pubs is our favourite one at the moment. So we're working for a, a big pub brand. I'm not surprised um, the pubs is the best one, is, the, is your favourite. Yeah, so it's 56 pubs to shoot um, wow. across the south of England. Uh, we're, we're six in at the moment. Um, so that's going to keep us busy. 50, um, 50 to go. Free, yeah, pint, and that's, free, free pint in every pub, Jim? Don't drink. You don't drink? Are you a tea I man? Drink. I am now, yeah. Oh. I don't drink. I'm a massive, massive advocate for tea. Yeah. I, love but, it. I do love a good cup of tea, but I also like a beer every now and again. Yeah, see, I'm alcohol-free beer, but we also do really good food. The head development chef is ace. So when we go there, we get really good lunches. So that's always <laughs> important. <laughs> excellent, excellent. So I've got a question. Yes. Drones, cameras, or software? What's going to get better quicker or faster? Which one of those do you think is, is going to... Software. Gonna, you reckon software? I don't think drones can go any further, really. I, I mean, They're just... They're just tweaking. They're going to give you another half an inch sensor. It might fly for two minutes longer. What is available in the marketplace at the moment, especially the M3 Enterprise range coming out or out at the moment, I don't think you can beat the DJI range or go much further. I, I know dro- there's a-, a drone at the end of the day is just a tool, right? Yeah. It's, you know, it's what you do with it and how you process it that, that gives you the results. There is rumor, as I saw this morning, of the Mavic 3 having uh an, another sensor yeah but the so i have a, it'll still have its uh micro four thirds but instead of having half inch sensor it's gonna have a one inch zoom sensor yeah i saw that come yeah. up this morning don't yeah take i that saw as, that don't take that as positive people i don't know if that's if that's lies or the truth but yeah but they're bringing out they're bringing out too many all at once at the moment because they, they just do. brought out the um the cine what was the other three they, brought, three they brought out the one the classic that has no zoom capability they've got the cine they've got the uh the e, enterprise the and the t and now supposedly this this next one yeah Smash the market think, dji go on get out there yeah. and do, do what you can and apparently there's another inspire coming at some point isn't there next so year they, as well so they allegedly say. I don't know how, um, how popular that's going to be. I mean, Inspires are massively, massively popular, aren't they? But a lot of people are doing stuff with smaller rigs now. So Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, I don't think drones are going anywhere. Payloads, no. they can tweak and change. Software, as we've discussed, the whole world's out there. You know, the discussions that baron has been having with my colleagues or my friends uh, in the construction industry which I'm sure you'll have on to talk at some point because yep. they can I think talk we much more tech.
technically than me about it because they know the big technical words and I don't come from Devon. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, they, those guys, uh, you know, they're at the forefront of that and construction yeah. well ahead of anybody else, I think, in the industry. So me working with them is brilliant because I'm learning from them. They're learning from me. Um, what we're going to do with software, I think, is going to grow over the next 12 months. And the rest yeah. of the industry... I realized, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm talking to somebody every couple of days at the moment or, you know, and can you come and talk to my company? Can you come and talk yeah. to my architects? Can you talk to my construction team? Can you tell me how you can, what drones can do? Just, and principally, it's saving them time and money. Yeah, yeah, that's that's the, the, the crux of it, really. I mean, I think drones and cameras will will develop, but they're not going to develop as quickly as as software. No, you know year on year there are you know there's new drones you've got the fpv stuff now that dji do as well and then obviously a yeah, new inspire lots of new mavic threes because they keep smashing those out but i think software it, you can constantly develop develop the software so yeah where do you see the drone industry evolving how do you see uh, it evolving? where's it gonna, where's it gonna go and this is the last this is the last question for you well it's the final we... question make it a good one final question I think that there's there's two ways forward. It's all down to the CAA as well at the moment. Yeah. So obviously BV loss has been happening. My friends at Skylift have been doing the Portsmouth at Isle of Wight chemotherapy drug trials. Okay. Um, they've done a lot of work with that. BV loss is big, but I think the CAA are holding that back. So I think what they thought would happen in the next 12 months is probably the next three or four years, which yeah. is probably frustrating because the, the advantages are phenomenal. Um, and agriculture. Um, I have spent a couple of years, again, working with Skylift um, on agricultural drone technology. Um, we went forward quite a lot. We got quite deep into it, um, talking about testing and stuff like that, being a very, very hard thing to get into. Um, amazingly, uh, a company called Ruas, I'm aware of those guys, um, yeah. Harris, they did the first commercial drone spray operation uh, this year, which is amazing. Um, had some really good talks with him. Commercially, that's a long way away. Spray. I don't understand if you can spray from a helicopter or an aeroplane and you have spray drift than that, whereas a drone can fly it like two meters above the crop. But they think there's more impact to that than there is a helicopter. I find quite bizarre. Yeah, I don't really get it either. Um, I'd, have thought, I'd have thought crop spraying with drones would have been in a long time ago, but it's still, you know, still early days for that, which is um, not not in the rest of the world, it isn't. No, no, just here in the UK. I'm um, obviously we, you know, we've got uh, we've got people that watch this all over the planet. Uh, here in the UK, it's a real hard push, but they're they're doing it elsewhere. So yeah, on you, the whole agronomy, the whole caption of data, and well, I think what people miss with the drone spraying is they want to target spray. It's not blanket yeah. spraying, so you, you're saving chemicals, time, people. You're not spraying sports of field because you still need the big kit for that. Yeah. What you're doing is the second, third, fourth, fifth operation. Um, uh, Ruas are, are, are ahead of that and they've invested a lot of time and money into this. Um, we've got a project we're chatting to them about that they might be able to help us with that we couldn't get over the end goal with. Um, and I wish them all the best. I think they're going to lead the way forward in that part of the industry. Again, he thinks it's probably going to take longer uh, than. Yeah, expects to make this happen but yeah i think agriculture construction is growing anyway we know yeah. that yeah that's that's doing. growing day on day construction yeah, yeah the next two years it's going to be massive yeah the next two years jones and construction will change the construction industry but then yeah. that will be followed by agriculture and uh, bb loss i think okay nice one well there no you worries. go jim what a legend you chat much. all on camera Excellent. Always a pleasure. Always, always a pleasure. A, always a pleasure, my friend. And we got to we got to chat face to kind of face to face ish. Yeah. We're on the phone quite a lot, but yeah, I haven't had a chance to have a have a sit down and a natter with you. So yeah, it's been a pleasure, buddy. Um, no worries. You're more than welcome. Cool. I guess that that just leaves me to say um, thanks very much for watching. Um, obviously, you can subscribe to us on uh, this here YouTube. Uh, we also do an audio podcast. This will go out as an audio podcast, which is available on all your podcast directories and um yeah it just leaves me to say thank you to jim and um catch everyone later cheers commander see you soon <laughs> and you commander <laughs> take it easy cheers bye cheers, take care bye